This kind of brings us into the concept of, po of pose and uh, of the run technique that we're talking about um, and why it was brought about was because pretty much since the development of shoes, I guess, <laughs> we could take it there. Um, I mean, I've got research that shows that when uh, shoes are implemented into an indigenous society, how quickly thereafter injury rates go up. Their societies underdevelop in terms of having new found injuries like uh, plantar fasciitis, shin splints, things like this, needing surgeries, be, uh, needing orthotics, stuff like that, um, where uh, pose, the pose method was developed because basically technology in the medical field were going up through the roof. We, we have shoes these days that have microchips in them that are willing to adjust to your foot uh, made by Adidas. We've got every kind of shoe known to man for neutral, pronator, supinator, uh, we need stabilizers, we need uh, orthotics, we need all this shit, yet injury rates continue to be at, the, at, at, at basically the highest level for running. And uh, the pose method was developed because this was something, everything else but the mechanics of this were being addressed. And uh, so in the 70s, Dr. Romanoff kind of came up with the whole scheme of things, started looking at biomechanics, started looking at how the body works, and um, came up with it. We looked at running and how, how we deal with it um, as in terms of what, where, what everybody looked like in certain poses. And essentially what we found, what's been found, is everybody at some point reaches in this figure four pose or almost clo or, or real close to it. Um, but what happens is this foot, when it's in contact with the ground underneath your general center of mass, is on the ball of the foot. Doesn't matter who you are, what you do, how you're doing it. So that kind of is one of, one of the telling points for me is to, okay, why are we always the same right there, okay? So what we look at with running is that general center of mass exists somewhere right, right about there. Meaning we could spin you if we had a stake in you and you'd spin equally no matter what, okay? <laughs> um, if anything lands in front of that, or is on the ground behind it, we've got two things that happen. We stop a movement or we create leverage. This brings me into the wheel concept, okay? General center of mass, okay? If that wheel or tire is inflated to its max, you're gonna have minimum contact with the ground, right? But it's directly underneath it at all times. Doesn't matter what's going on, right? So, if I wanted to speed that wheel up, would I want to put something out in front of it to speed it up? Or push something out the back of it to speed it up? So, if anything lands out in front of you, physics tells us our neurological system isn't quick enough to get that foot up off the ground. Prior to that point, that foot's going to remain on the ground an equal distance out the back usually, okay? Which means we're, our, our contact with the ground is greater. The further out in front we get, and, and we'll see it today, the further out in front we get, the more contact with the ground we're, we have. The more contact with the ground you have, the lower you are.